Hey everyone, it's been a minute since I made my last announcement video about me leaving the adult industry and it's been six months since I stopped filming now so I wanted to kind of do a catch up video with you all. If you haven't already, we announced in uh, the pineapples video that we have a new channel. I'm actually posting the full video of this on the new channel. That new channel is at Jess Alex Zach. Uh, it's the channel that will follow our life from now on and our thruple and all of our adventures here on out. The old page was Casey and Jax. I was known as Casey J. I'm now out with my real name, Jess Porter. You can find my Instagram at Jess Porter Official. Um, I've removed all the Casey J names and everything. Uh, hope to have you guys all following me on the new channels and everything. And I'm excited for this new phase of life. Uh, I guess we can get started and get going from there. Hopefully the weather will continue to cooperate. We might get some showers and I might have to adjust some things a little bit. But stick with me if uh, you don't mind me moving around and stuff a little bit. So it's been quite a journey with rebranding myself. Um, I think there have been some major surprises with my own personal journey and all of it. But I kind of realized that I, since I hadn't ever really announced that I was under a persona, I've been able to examine some of that. And people have asked me lately, you know, why Casey J if my name was Jess Porter? Well, the whole thing came about because when I initially started, I had no intention of having a persona. I was, I like my name. I was happy to go by Jess. I didn't feel any any type of way that I needed to hide my identity and I was already um, out and proud. I was gay, married with um, my husband Alex and I never, I didn't really have any reason to hide anything from my life. Um, I had already left the Mormon church. I was in a state school, so I didn't have an employer or a school that would have a problem with what I was doing. And uh, I thought everything was gonna be fine. Well, shortly after I opened my account, I actually had a really, really difficult time because somebody um, basically went and collected a lot of my adult content and screenshots and photos and they started attacking my family and everybody I knew with them. This caused me to freeze my accounts for, I don't know, maybe a month. And then I realized I, w I didn't want to let somebody that had really terrible intentions for me and my family to win. So I got back on and came up with the KCJ Fitness Freak persona. Now, when this was going on, it was super, super difficult and traumatic for me because I had such a small following then. I didn't, so it was someone pretty close. We're, we're not really sure exactly who, but somebody, you know, all the way back from the beginning and they went and created several fake Facebook accounts and sent these explicit images to my parents, my siblings, Alex's family. Um, and it created this fear. It allowed it, it kind of freed me in a, in a way because I was able to fully be transparent with family about a sensitive topic. You know, they're all Mormon. Um, they're in, they're all active in the LDS faith, so it was a hard thing for them to be faced with. And it put a strain on our relationship for several months. You know, who's, whose mom should ever have to see them that way? <laughs> it, it was really rough. My mom got to see very explicit images. And, you know, when she first got them, she probably sent a dozen of them to me, one by one, to get the point across. I felt really terrible. Um, that whoever chose to do this really was harming my family um, 
and their sensitivities to it. And I felt like it was really harsh and unfair that uh, my parents, especially, I had, my siblings were all younger than me. I had some very young siblings. Um, luckily, my parents opened it first. And so I was able to head it off with most of the other family and Alex was able to head it off with his family and warn all of them not to open um, messages from random accounts that might be messaging them harmful things about us. And it was really rough. They used a lot of scare tactics with my family. They, um, they told them that Alex was um, taking me down this horrible path and they tried to use this fear of, oh, you can save your son and his partner is to blame. And when they felt like that didn't work, there were messages um, that the guys we were with in the videos were underage and tried to scare them with, you know, kind of that stereotype, underage, bias, garbage that people automatically, some people automatically um, assign to LGBTQ and, and gays. And it, it was just, I had to work through some of those um, points with my parents, unfortunately. And, and they did really well. My family has treated me very well over the years. Um, we all just moved on from it. But in the beginning, that's, that's why I went looking for a persona and wasn't, uh, wasn't using my, my legal name. It was purely just to put in some distance and protection from the gay community and the public in general from from my family members um, not because you know it wasn't anything that was going to affect my life I wasn't going to lose a job or get kicked out of school or my obviously my partners involved my friends weren't having an issue with it it was purely just to protect the family um, at first, I, would, I went by Fitness Freak and 801 Fitness Freak, and a lot of people uh, remember back then. Um, I actually came up with KCJ after I had another round of attacks, and I think it was all this same person. Um, and I don't know. I believe in karma. It was really... It, it was pretty messed up back then. The The next round of attacks that got me to come up with a full persona name uh, happened when uh, whoever it is created new fake accounts and then um, sent content and images in my account to my, uh, my university. They sent it to the head office and of my master's program. And at the time I was actually international working on a project for my MBA and they sent it to the cohort members they could find while we were in Beijing. And I remember I, we were, I was literally out with my cohort members working on an international AI project with a university in Beijing and they started bringing it up to me and uh, the timing just, it really sucked. Um, Alex and I were there Alex was along for the ride to enjoy the experience with me and I was there to do this huge presentation and yeah it was just it was not fun having to ask my schoolmates cohort members um, to just ignore the messages and not open them and I hope they didn't open them I kind of felt like if I had warned everybody that it was on them if they opened them and saw things that they didn't want to see what I did appreciate is several of them stepped up for me and actually went to the head of the business department and told them kind of what had happened and that, that some negative things were going on for me of bad intention people were targeting me. And I, <laughs> at the time, I didn't know what was gonna happen, but it scared the daylights out of me because I got called into the the office, the head, uh, the dean of the business school called me in and to my shock he actually asked if the school needed to get involved to protect me and 
it was that was huge for me i felt like i had my community that was very much it, there were mormons in it there were people that are completely outside of lgbt very conservative people that actually kind of stepped up for me and stepped stepped in for me um in a in a weird way in a bad situation it was actually kind of a win for me to feel like there are good people out there that were concerned for me even though they didn't approve of what i was doing or understand um they did have concern for you know my safety and well-being after those late incidents uh i went above and beyond i went and wiped my facebook account my my family that had, had been on it and everything i just shut it down and closed it down and i opened new instagrams and everything and that's pretty much when KCJ was born. Now, KCJ, actually, the persona had, there were really specific reasons why I named myself KCJ. KC comes from my time in junior high. There was actually this really attractive uh, jock <laughs> that liked to tease and kind of torture me a lot. And I was this really runty, underdeveloped, tiny tiny guy um for most of my school years I'm nothing like I am now like really really small I'm one of five boys in my family and I was by far the runtiest and smallest of the whole bunch even though I'm the oldest and this guy one of his bullying tactics was he decided he got my name wrong one day and instead of calling me Jess or Jesse, he called me Casey. Well, I went to correct him and forever after he decided, no, the name he had said was actually my name. It was just one of his bullying tactics to kind of get under my skin. And so forever after he called me Casey and then he did his very best to try to get all my classmates and schoolmates to also call me Casey and purposefully have them tease me and, and stop using my actual name and misname me basically so that's kind of why i decided to use casey it was the name the bully had assigned to me uh growing up so i kind of wanted to feel like i took it back from him so i decided casey would be my first name and then jay was i i thought casey james at first because my grandma kind of used to nickname me like Jesse James and say that sometimes but then I decided I didn't want to do that and I wanted to have a second name that also kind of was me getting back at the the gay bullies growing up and so Jay came from it was the the name of the boy that was bullied when I was young in, in like first grade that was bullied because um he was feminine. I remember he was kind of this chubby kid with longer curly hair and he liked to play with Barbies and he liked pink and he was different and so the other kids picked up on it and it's actually the first time I think I remember hearing kids call somebody gay and it was negative. And so at that time I made sure that I wanted nothing to do with him and distant myself from him because the things they were bullying him for were the things that I liked. I also liked playing with Barbies. I liked girls toys. My favorite color was pink. When I was a really, really little kid, like first drawing and stuff, I drew myself as a princess in pink clothes with butterflies and rainbows around me. and. I knew as a boy that that was not okay and it, it was in the safety of my home that I did all that but watching the other kids bully this kid and call him gay I I didn't know what gay meant at the time but I knew it was bad and I knew they were mean to him so that was my first interaction with somebody being called gay and being bullied for being gay and I don't know if he's gay to this day. I don't know anything about where he ended up. He probably was, I don't know. But I decided I wanted to take that name too. So both of them have to do with bullies, bullying, 
uh, because of being gay. So that's why. That's where KCJ came from for all the people that are now asking. You know, no one ever asked before because they didn't know it wasn't my real name or maybe they just didn't bother to go looking. And the persona worked. My, my life went forward and in public I was known as KCJ and in private I was just to my friends, to my family. It wasn't really a secret, like people outside of close friends would find out that my name was also Jess and it wasn't really a big deal or anything. So it was more just literally so random strangers on the internet wouldn't go looking for my family and causing heartache and hurt to them. Because really the people that were suffering when they would get sent explicit images of their family member was the family, not not me. I was suffering just because I felt bad for my family for being forced to see things they didn't want to see. Um, but, you know, I proudly lived how I was living and have lived this way for the last seven, eight years. And it, it didn't affect income or anything else, friends or anything else in my life other than just literally hurting my family. So that's kind of the backstory of how it all got going, how it all got started. Well, now here I am on the other end and I'm coming out of the KCJ era, I guess. Um, Fitness Freak was already dropped. I thought I was gonna keep KCJ for a while. And I realized after I finished with all my filming and everything in August, that as I moved forward with my new life and my new throuple relationship and everything, that I was just ready to drop all of it and move on, that I didn't want to drag it out. Uh, initially, I thought, you know, oh, over 2024, I'll kind of stick with KCJ. I won't do any new filming, but, you know, I still have a bunch of content to release, which I, I still haven't released to this day. There's a lot of content still to release. Um, and it became me kind of navigating how I wanted my life to change. And I realized I wanted it to change a lot faster than it was. There was definitely this, this tug of war a little bit between wanting to be just full time, but feeling this tug and pressure of, you know, KCJ. And I would just found that KCJ didn't align with uh, this new life I was building. And so quickly I realized I wanted to drop all of the KCJ personas from my profiles and move on because I was ready to, I felt like I was ready for the full me to come out, which is Jess. I wanted to just be Jess all the time and not I kind of wanted to feel like I wasn't having to put on a show that wasn't me anymore, is how it felt. Um, maybe some feelings of wanting my life to be a little more authentic. Definitely feelings of wanting my life to move away from the hyper sexual, sexual nature of the past eight years. Um, Stepping away from KCJ has felt like I've unlocked part of me that parts of me that have been shielded, maybe walled up for protection over the years. Um, I think maybe that is a whole nother topic in video that should be gone into sometimes is I've realized post working in the field and post adult content that there definitely have been were some deep negative impacts on me that get got skimmed over for all those years while I was in the middle of it I had a lot of fun and it was exciting you know all these men all this excitement partying all this stuff but I think deep down I knew there was an expiration date, not only 
everybody says the age thing like oh you're gonna age out of adult world <laughs> but i think really there's an expiration for a lot of us that you know we get exhausted emotionally and mentally and it can really really take a toll on emotional and mental health i feel like i'm at peak physical condition um i i like how i look better than i ever have previous in my life so it it wasn't a oh i aged out type of thing but i really do feel like i had gone past where i wanted to go on an emotional level and on a mental level and I, I had to do a lot of things the last couple years especially to set boundaries for myself so that I wouldn't get emotionally exhausted and worn out. And I, I think there were definitely aspects that, you know, there was a toll on my relationship with my family. I would purposely keep myself surface level with all of them because I didn't want to talk about my life in too much depth they didn't want to hear too much about my life and as long as we kept everything surface that you know everybody got along great we have game nights we'd get together we'd have vacation time and i i was feeling kind of this sadness that there were definite walls and i think a lot of that was on my end i don't think it was necessarily my family doing that to me um but I was walling myself off emotionally from them a lot. Uh, I was very fortunate, had, had an incredible friends group outside of the industry that are very supportive to me. I've had them for years and that made a huge difference. Um, my husband and I, Alex, you know, we've been together for 10 years and eight years of it had some way or another been part of this industry and I think his support and the friend's support I had went a very very long way in helping me navigate adult world and the adult space as best I could and keeping myself in check on my emotional state and my mental state and I think being able to step out of that world and into a normal life um, definitely helped me a lot of the time but it, I, I feel like having your sex life with your significant other definitely uh, open to the public and out there for the public certainly takes a toll um having money tied to your sex life and your personal life definitely puts strain on the relationship and takes a toll there was probably about six months to a year's time where i felt like it was taking too much of a toll on my marriage and we basically pulled all filming of my husband and I and for that period of time it was just me filming with others and keeping our private life private for a little while um, I think during that time specifically there were just concerns that too much of our life was too public and there wasn't anything left over for us anymore and so for quite a while, we actually pulled back so that we could feel like we had more of a private life. And then as we felt that that had recovered and we felt a lot better, we came up with boundaries of there wasn't so much of just the two of us and we left the time with just the two of us private. But then Alex started jumping in a lot more when it had to do with other creators. So that's kind of the boundaries we set for ourselves. I would purposely do these trips where I would go and do a lot of filming in a short amount of time and then take off weeks or months at a time where I wouldn't do any filming so that I could feel like I emotionally recovered and didn't have to be that all the time. I knew there was an expiration date because I didn't feel like it was conducive to who I actually wanted to be anymore. Um, 
in the early years of me filming in the adult space, I had really, really terrible self-image issues. Like I didn't like how I looked at all and I didn't have any confidence in my body. And those early years were really exciting. It was kind of a awakening for me. I through everything I was doing, I actually came to accept how I looked. And oddly, it really was a strength and a growth opportunity for me. But that wore out after, probably, I would say, the first half of my career. And the second half, it was definitely career mindset. It was everything I was doing was to filter people into my accounts to make more money, to make my business as successful as possible. And the two, diff the two mentalities put you in completely different spaces. The first half, when you're in the mentality of this is fun, I'm growing, it's exciting, I'm discovering myself, it kind of has that whole positive spin and has a purpose to it. The second half, the purpose was purely financial and I started to feel like it was actually a detriment to my personal growth and I had moved on from the things I had needed in the early years. I was confident with how I looked. I liked how I looked. I had become self-confident in my abilities. I had moved on from some of the social anxieties and I had become a lot more confident socially and in public settings. And that all led me to my time at Mr. I can't imagine myself in my early years being able to be an ambassador and show up to circuit parties, to go-go, and to be very publicly, like, in very little clothing and speedos and stuff. I did not have that kind of confidence in the early years. It's amazing to me that I had progressed to that point by the end of my career. and. I really appreciate that aspect of the career, but I'm very happy I've left. In the last six months, it's been such a relief to not feel like I have to be on all the time, to not feel like there's this pressure to have the perfect body all the time. Um, my motivation now to go to the gym is because it's for me, it's for my partners, it's not for being in underwear shoots and being nude on camera and making sure I look my best all the time so that I look really good in my videos and they sell. Like the, the money aspect of it has been removed and now I find my journey to be a lot more fulfilling in the gym, my training to be more fulfilling and my reasons for doing it is for myself and my significant others. Um, I don't know if I, I've been talking for probably two years now of leaving the adult industry, but to be honest, I don't know if I would have been able to leave this early if our partner Zach wouldn't have come along, wouldn't have come along. <laughs> um, I think Zach gave me the opportunity to have motivation to do what I already wanted to do. Um, I knew I wanted to commit to the relationship with him. Um, I knew I had already been desiring to pursue other things in my life, um, other career opportunities and to step away from the adult. But it's fun and the money is incredible. <laughs> and it, it's really hard to step away from something that I had gotten down to a science. It was routine for me. I was good at it. I knew how to make money and I was making lots of it. And that was hard to walk away from, even though I knew I didn't want to do it anymore. It's hard to say no to something that is so lucrative and successful. It feels good to go and have these fun experiences and be able to travel all over and party all the time. Um, but it just wasn't what I wanted for myself anymore. So now I've been embracing, I changed over my accounts to Jess. 
Um, and I love what it's, what it's unlocked for me. I feel like it's unlocked a much softer side of me with my relationship and my family. I feel like some walls that I put up to protect the softer side of me, they've come down. And, you know, through working with friends and family and talking to people and uh, uh, going in, I'm in, a, uh, in with a therapist right now that specializes in polyamorous relationships. And, you know, working with a therapist through all these emotions that I'm feeling as I'm drastically changing my life. Um, I really like who's come out of their shell. I like Jess. I like that Jess is coming out of his shell more and more as time goes on. And I'm really excited at this point about future uh, possibilities with, um, with work opportunities. Um, I'm definitely, I got some things in the work that works that I'm uh, focused on right now. Alex has his job that he's already had and he's successful in. Zach has his job that he's already had and he's successful in. So it's nice to have some of that new adventure mentality again. Um, I feel like my creativity had become very stagnant in the adult sphere because I, it was just going through the motions for the last couple years. Felt like the same thing over and over. And I had a great run and it was a long time. Uh, I, I think a decently long time within the sphere. Um, I'm looking at some notes here because I want to try to keep <laughs> things on track with what I'm talking about. Hopefully it's all been tracked pretty well for those of you that have <laughs> watched this far. But yeah, it, uh, I'm in a really good place and very happy with where I'm at now. I feel like I am much more at peace with myself and with what I'm doing. I, it, this has allowed me to really explore this new relationship with Zach and get a lot more deeply involved with him and our throuple with Alex. Uh, this has allowed the three of us to you know, basically come out poly to all three of our families. We've all met each other's families. Um, the fear of, I guess not fear, the anxieties that existed a little bit before with my family and what I was doing, my work and everything, those have all subsided. Um, they were aware the whole time, but it was kind of the unspoken, let's just not talk about it. And most of the time it was just, uh, you know, Jess models. I think that's that was kind of just the general thing, Jess models. Um, even though I think most people, you know, they're not dumb. They, they have access to the internet and everything. Um, and I really appreciate their, how good and kind they were to me over the years. I think it actually, really shows the type of people they are. Um, my lifestyle is so far out of their belief system and and everything that I really do appreciate how, how well I was treated all the years that I was working in the adult sphere. Um, yeah, life is good. Uh, really been enjoying San Diego and being here at home base more. It, it's so strange going from traveling multiple times every month, going to events, attending events as a Mr. Model and then doing filming, you know, going to parties all the time. It's very strange that in six months time, my life is just totally flipped. Um, I am pretty much a homebody a lot of the time now. <laughs> Uh, we, we spend a lot of time here in San Diego. We haven't traveled much other than to visit family. I rarely, I rarely have even been to LA in the last six months. So it's been a huge, huge shift in lifestyle. 
Um, but I'm I'm loving it. Uh, there's even it's crazy even the little changes that have happened with things like you know we're in we're in an exclusive relationship as uh, our thruple. It's called poly monogamous. Uh, so we're not hooking up with other people. We're not open to dating anybody else. It's the three of us and that in and of itself That should probably be its own video with with Alex of how that's been. It's been a massive shift from You know, I was filming and in the adult industry and had a completely open marriage basically to We're in a closed uh, poly monogamous throuple um, and I don't think I even comprehended or understood how hypersexual my life was until I stepped out of that sphere and entered into a closed relationship. It completely changes how you interact within the gay community. And we actually stepped away from a lot of things we were doing you know we don't really have any desire to go out to the bars and stuff anymore and I don't think we realize how much our interactions with others were still in some way geared toward being sexual or the potential to be sexual I don't you know we weren't out having sex with everybody but when you're in an open relationship like that, it doesn't matter how you interact with other men. You can be overly friendly and flirty and messages didn't matter and our social media didn't matter, our clothes. So it's been a dramatic shift for me where once my Instagram and stuff didn't have a monetary motivation to filter people over to my Twitter and OnlyFans. I had no motivation or desire anymore to even be posting underwear photos or anything. I went and purged, I think I purged three to 400 posts off my Instagram accounts of I think just my personal account and even more on top of that off the joint account where I just, I don't need to have that content out there for the public anymore. You know, I'm not trying to promote a sexual side of myself anymore. And it's it's been an interesting journey realizing that even, you know, the way we interact with other gay men needed to be adjusted and stuff. Things I haven't thought of in a very, very long time, you know? How you touch each other and everything. It was, it, I became hyper aware of all of it when our life dramatically shifted over the other way. I feel like my life is much more aligned to the real authentic me, to my authentic self. I think it's, allowed me moving forward to have the opportunity to grow into a better version of myself and I've I've really been happy with the emotions that have come forth and been unlocked by Zach and Alex and our relationship and me not feeling that I needed to protect uh, those things anymore um it's it's been an amazing transform transformative process for me and this has already gotten on 40 minutes so i'm gonna wrap this up this uh episode up anyway but i really appreciate all of you that have been so supportive in in the changes that have been so positive and supportive of my relationship uh, with the boys online it goes a long way having a community that is cheering you on and supporting good things for you uh, supporting positive growth and that's what this is for me that's what all these changes have been for me and I enjoyed the KCJ phase 
and it was it had great things about it while it was going on it had some things about it that I didn't like but all in all it was quite a chapter and quite an adventure and you know I can just kind of look back on it and smile and I, I had a great run but I really do appreciate all of you that have supported me over the years as KCJ and so many of you that have been so vocal and kind to me supporting this new direction and this new chapter of my life and of mine and Alex's and Zach's life. Anyway, hope you uh, all check out the current channel, which is just Alex and Zach. Follow us there. Um, make sure you subscribe to the new channel. I will put clips of this onto the old channel, but hopefully all of you keep moving over to the new one and following the new chapter and new adventures here on out. Nice to meet all of you as Jess, and I will be sharing more in the future. If you have any aspects of our relationship and life that you want us to talk more about, leave it in the comments. Um, open to suggestions or anything that interests you and we'll do our best to have interesting content and videos for you guys following our life here on out. Much love from San Diego. Almost sunset time here. Um, hope you all have a good rest of your week. Talk to you soon.